Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. My name is Ivana, and I am uh, very happy to be connected with, the, with all of you here today, where we're going to see all about Atlas TI-22 for both Windows and Mac computers. And in particular, we're going to be seeing how we can use Atlas TI for our literature reviews. And so maybe some of you are familiar with Atlas TI, or maybe today is the first time you're seeing the software. Everyone is welcome. You're certainly in the right place. Because today we're going to get to see an overview of both of the, the desktop versions. And, and we'll see that, you know, even though this software was originally created to help with qualitative data analysis, this is also a really powerful tool for carrying out literature reviews. So my name is Ivana and I'm the project manager with Atlas TI. And so I'm happy to connect with all of you today to show Atlas TI and, and take a look at how we can apply the software in these other creative ways and to help out with the whole literature review process. And so I'd like to begin by saying, what is a literature review? Just so that we're all starting on the same page. Well, what we mean by a literature review is simply a synthesis of work that was previously done that's most relevant to the topic that we're studying. And so this is an important thing that every single researcher has to engage in eventually. We have to see what other uh, scholars and researchers are saying about this topic, what we currently know about this topic. But when we're writing our literature review, what we want to do is to tell a compelling story about this literature. In other words, we want to use our literature review to develop our own arguments rather than simply compile a library where we're repeating everything that was previously done. So perhaps a helpful way to think about this when we're writing the literature review is that we want to describe the forest of knowledge, but not necessarily every single tree inside that forest. So we want to synthesize what's currently known around this topic and then use that synthesis in a way that we're developing our own arguments and to tell this story about what it is that we're studying. So why is the literature review important? Well, on the one hand, we want to avoid reinventing the wheel. So we want to make sure that whatever it is that we want to study hasn't already been studied, hasn't already been answered by someone else. So that's one important part of the literature review. Now, another very important reason why we need literature reviews is so that we can describe the current state of the art of knowledge around this topic, that we familiarize ourselves with what we know, with what other researchers are saying about this, what they're doing about this, so that we are also aware of this conversation that's being, that's being had around this topic. Because of course, with our own research, we also want to join that conversation. Now, another extremely important goal of the literature review is to identify any gaps in current understanding. Where do we have any knowledge missing? Where does our knowledge come short? You know, we certainly know a lot about many different topics, but there are still so many unanswered questions out there. And the only way that we can identify these unanswered questions is by doing a literature review to see what we do know. Because always with our research, we want to advance knowledge and we want to contribute something new to this conversation. So of course, we need to get to know that conversation in order to see what we can also add to it with our research. So where then does Atlas TI fit into this? Well, Atlas TI is a tool, it's a powerful software that we as researchers can use to facilitate our analysis of any kind of unstructured or non-numerical data. So any kind of qualitative data. And we say that Atlas TI is a tool that facilitates because Atlas TI will not do the entire analysis for us. It's still us, the human researchers, who have to read all the articles and make sense of the information and interpret and critically reflect. But it's, Atlas TI certainly is a very powerful tool that can accompany us throughout our entire research journey. And certainly by counting on Atlas TI, we can carry out an analysis that is more organized, transparent, and integrated. Now, Atlas TI is also a wonderful tool for collaborating with others because we can have very easily multiple people working on the same project and then putting all our work and ideas together. So it's a great help for teamwork. And then of course we can use Atlas TI to carry out qualitative analyses. We can also use it for some quantitative analyses. And so we'll see that there are some tools in the software that can quantify our qualitative analyses, but also the entire Atlas TI project can be exported and then imported 
into a statistical analysis software like SPSS or R. And so you can also use the software for mixed methods research. Now, of course, we can analyze a great variety of types of data. So we can analyze text data, which is what we'll be focusing on here today since we're looking at articles for the literature review. But just so you're also aware, you can use Atlas TI to analyze images, audio recordings, videos, geographic data, uh, notes from Evernote. We can import references from bibliographic reference managers. You can import survey data, tweets from Twitter, and comments from social media posts. So a lot of different kinds of data that can be added to a single project so that we can analyze overarching patterns and trends. And so Atlas TI has been around for over 30 years now. And today we're on version 22 of the software. And so we're gonna to get to see a bit of both the desktop versions. So Windows and Mac here today. Uh, but I did, I did just want to briefly mention, you know, if you are interested in getting your own license for Atlas TI, uh, it's very good to know that always our licenses include full functionality. And so what we mean by this is that it's a one-time purchase and you get the whole software, all of the tools and features are included. You don't have to pay anything extra to unlock any other parts of it. And what's more is that one license for Atlas TI gives you access to all of the platforms. So you can use Atlas TI on Windows, Mac, you can use Atlas TI Web, that's our online version. And so you can always choose which one you want to work in. And of course, you can also move the project uh, between the platforms. And so we do have a lot of flexibility here. Now, if you want to already get started with Atlas TI today, then I certainly recommend starting the free trial version because this will give you access to the full software and you can use this for five days. Now, these are not five consecutive days, but rather five times that you actually enter and use the software. So you can already start your literature review, add in your articles and you know, give it a go with your own uh, project, you know, your own topics. And then even when you've used up your five days, your project will still stay saved there. It's not going anywhere. Uh, you just won't be able to save any changes that you make to it, but your project stays there. And then you can get a license and activate it and continue working on that same project. And so the free trial is a great way to already get started with your, with your research project. Now we have different licenses on our website that you can see, but if you are interested in getting a license for Atlas TI Windows or Mac, you can all count on a 10% discount coupon. So just put this code in the shopping cart and you'll see the, the price reduced immediately. So that's just NKQ10 and you'll get a 10% off as well. Now, aside from the licenses, I also uh, wanted to encourage everyone to explore our website uh, because we offer a great variety of learning resources. For example, if you and your team or class or colleagues want to learn more about Atlas TI, you can request a free personalized online demo. Basically, you just need to let us know what it is about Atlas TI that you want to learn more about, and then we'll be happy to prepare a one hour online presentation for you and your group. We also offer premium trainings where we go into a lot more depth and detail with Atlas TI. And then upon completing any of our premium trainings, you'll also receive an official certificate from the Atlas TI Academy. And then aside from the trainings, we of course have the full software manual. We have a lot of extensive documentation. We have a research blog where we regularly publish articles of interest. And we have video tutorials that you can see on our website, but also if you search for us on YouTube. So it's a great way to revise anything about the software. Now, for example, if you are interested in learning more about Atlas TI, then uh, I, also, I just wanted to briefly recommend our self-paced courses. And so these are a really comfortable way to learn because you get unlimited access to all the course contents for a period of 30 days, and then you finish the course according to your own rhythm and pace. And so it's a great way to learn. We're really happy that we're consistently receiving really positive feedback on these courses. And so we have courses on the different uh, platforms of Atlas TI, but also on using it for literature review. And well, in case you're interested, you can use that same 10% discount code for the courses as well. But of course, all this being said, if you do ever have any questions about anything, whether it's a training, a license, or just how to use the software, you can always count on our free perpetual support. You can give us a call, you can send us an email, and we also have a live chat, so you can just chat directly with us. So feel free to reach out. We offer our support 24 hours a day, five days a week. So we're always here and happy to help however we can. 
So then, without any further ado, why don't we go ahead and take a look at Atlas TI. So I'd like to begin in Atlas TI for Mac, and then for the second half of the presentation, we can move over to Atlas TI for Windows. But you'll see that uh, Atlas TI, Mac, and Windows, they have 100% compatibility and transferability, so you can move projects back and forth, or you can collaborate with others who might be using Mac or Windows. So that's perfectly fine. Uh, and then both of these platforms can do all of the same things. So they have all the same features, just the interface is different because they were each natively designed for their operating system. So everything that you can do on your Mac, you can do in Atlas TI Mac, and everything you can do on your Windows, you can do in Atlas TI Windows. But all right, so to start out, here we are in Atlas TI 22 for Mac. And in this project, I'm conducting a literature review on the topic of children and happiness. And you know, this kind of debate about whether having children increases or decreases your happiness or you know, what kinds of effects it has on your happiness. So I've already added a few articles here. If we take a look on the left-hand side, we can see we have five documents. So a document, in this case, is referring to the articles of our literature review. Now, a document is really just any source of information that we're going to be analyzing in Atlas TI. So documents could also be images or videos or tweets from Twitter, any kind of information or data we want to analyze, we would add as a document. And so we can, of course, double click on any of these to open it up and see the full document here. And so we can read our articles. And then here on the right hand side, this is something that we have uh, just an Atlas TI Mac, and this is the what we call the inspector panel. This panel is simply serves to provide more detailed information about whatever object we just clicked on. So you'll notice that as we click on different parts, this will be changing. It'll just show us more details about that. But just so we're aware, you know, what this is going on over here on the side. But so let's imagine we found some articles online, we've added them into our project here. And so then how might we prepare ourselves for literature review? Well, a few tips that I'd like to share when it comes to organizing the articles here is that uh, oftentimes when we download things off the internet, the names of the files might have some kind of nonsense name or just something that's not really helpful. It's not very descriptive. And so it's a very good habit to get into to rename our documents so that we can see what they're all about. So in particular, what I would recommend is that whenever you do find some uh, article, that you would like to include, you can download it. And then also copy paste that full reference of the article. So the full references are available on most uh, search databases, or you can get it on Google Scholar. You know, so there's plenty of easy ways that you can get full references. And then we add the article into Atlas TI, and then we have the perfect place where we can paste that reference. So you'll see that down here we have a comment space and every single individual object in Atlas TI has its own comment space. And so this is the perfect place to just copy paste that full reference right there. And then we, are, we always have that on hand. And then we can always see exactly where each of our articles came from. So what we can do is copy paste the full reference in and then we can give it a more descriptive name. So what kind of name might we want to give for a literature review? Well, here, we advise to put in the document name the information that you would use to cite that article. And so, for example, it would be very helpful to put in the author's name, the year this was published. And then maybe you can put the title or just some keywords to, you know, so you know what this is about. But honestly, what I often do, for example, is I copy paste the full reference and then I just select the, you know, the first part of it where it's the author's name here in the title and then we paste it up here. And so then we have a very nice and easy to see uh, information. And so we can do that with each of our articles. And so then this organization goes a long way. It'll make it so much easier to keep track of everything. I mean, right now I have five articles, so it's not so uh, you know, difficult to keep track of, but as we add more and more articles, I mean, definitely it can get overwhelming. And so this information is key. You know, I'm sure that your future self will be grateful that you took the time to organize it here. And then we also always have the bibliography whenever we need it. So those are just some tips for preparing things here for the literature review. But so then let's imagine we've added in our articles and 
updated our documents to describe them, give them descriptive names, put that full reference there. So let's start reading and analyzing. So we carry out the analysis in Atlas TI by simply going through and reading the text. And then whenever we come across any segment of information that captures our attention, we can highlight that. We can highlight as much or as little as we want. Now to save this highlighted segment, we can right click and we have some different options here. If we just want to save the highlighted segment, we can simply create the quotation. Now in this margin area on the right-hand side, we see this little blue vertical bar. And so this is Atlas TI showing us the size and location of a quotation in our document. So a quotation is simply any segment of data or information that we have selected and saved. So this is just like highlighting documents. And maybe this is how you did literature reviews before. I mean, you would read in PDFs or if you would read them in Mendeley or Zotero and you just go through highlighting. So naturally we can also do that here in Atlas TI. But let's imagine that as we are doing our literature review here, we also want to start capturing our analysis of these quotations and start organizing all of these quotations. And so this is already where Atlas TI starts to stand out from these other softwares, especially from bibliographic reference managers. Because yes, you can highlight and take notes, but then that's pretty much where, where the analysis part ends. But in Atlas TI, we can do quite a lot more. So let's imagine we go through and we're highlighting here some relevant segments of information. We right click. And now if we want to already start organizing all these quotations, what we can do is attach codes to the quotations. Now a code can be simply a word or a short phrase that's describing something we're seeing. We can also think of codes as tags that we're gonna go, we're gonna go tagging all the quotations to organize this. So we click on apply codes and Atlas TI opens up the coding window. And then right here, we can type any code name that we would like. So for example, here I could say uh, maybe, so here they're quoting evidence that children uh, decrease happiness. You can type out any kind of code name you'd like and then we, we click on the plus button or just press enter on your keyboard and now we've created the code and attached to that quotation. So if we go back here we see the quotation and now we have this code attached. So we can add as many codes as we would like. So maybe here I could also say you know it's talking about happiness uh, life satisfaction, marital satisfaction, right? So we could uh, code in as much you know, detail as we would like here, but then we'll see later how it's very quick and easy to tell Atlas TI, okay, I want to see everything that we found about life satisfaction. And then with the click of the mouse, we can see all the quotations attached to this code. So that's just one of the reasons why coding is so helpful. And you know, we're going through and synthesizing a lot of all this information from the literature review and, you know, and then it's also up to us to decide, well, what information is relevant? You know, what is it that we want to know about this literature? For example, maybe you have some, uh, well, of course you have keywords that you're interested in analyzing. You have your research question and there's some theoretical concepts or keywords that you're studying. So maybe you want to capture information anytime someone's talking about that. Maybe you have, uh, you want to start defining different, uh, key concepts in your literature review. You know? So maybe here they're giving a definition for happiness, while here they're giving a definition for satisfaction. You know? So maybe we want to capture all of these. And so then we can also uh, add these codes there. And so we can think about any kind of information. So other potential ideas just to kind of, uh, to help us think of how we might apply codes in our literature review. Maybe you want to create codes on what kinds of empirical methods have been used in this topic, or to see what kinds of theories authors are using or building on. If you want to also get an idea of what are the main theories in this area? Uh, what about any gaps that are mentioned? Any you know, uh, limitations or suggestions for further research? And so something, when someone is saying that there's a gap or, or suggesting what further research could do, then they're effectively pointing out this is somewhere where we don't have enough knowledge. And remember, we want to contribute something new with our own research. So when we identify these kinds of things, then we could think about, you know, perhaps we could fill that gap. Perhaps we could 
give some sort of or conduct some sort of research that can help answer those unanswered questions. And so naturally, of course, we could also create codes for research gaps. And so we have all that information saved there. And so this is a very helpful way to go through and read the literature. And then later, it's very easy to bring up any of this information. You know, so I, I for example, I have a Atlas TI project for, for different, you know, topics that I'm, I'm working in where I collect all the articles. Anytime I read something, I put it in the project and then you can go through, read and code and write your notes. And so it's like compiling a big library, you know, and then I have a project with hundreds of articles in it, but then you can use these for different research projects. And so it's really easy to look through all that information and just like, you know, get a handle on it and manage it all. So coding is a really nice way to start kind of segmenting the information. Now, another helpful thing as we're reading articles, we also have a lot of ideas going through our mind. And so of course it'd be helpful to be able to write these ideas down somewhere. Well, this is exactly where memos come in. A memo is essentially a notebook and we can also make as many as we would like. So, you know, you can make memos maybe for different topics that we have or different questions. Uh, I mean, it's up to you to decide whatever makes sense for you. You know, so maybe here, you know, defining something like happiness, it's so complex and, you know, polemic. So maybe I have a memo where we can write our notes or critical analyses and reflections, ideas. And, you know, these memos, I mean, it's even sort of like first drafts of what, what would be in our final literature review. You know, what are the arguments that we want to be building? And what is it that we're noticing? What kinds of patterns? So we can start putting all that together in memos. And then what's great here is that, you know, we can link all these different parts of our project together. And so just like we can attach codes to our quotations, we can also attach memos. And so we can do that also just by dragging and dropping from the left-hand side. And then we also have memos attached here. And so in that way, we can have our coding, we can write our notes, we have everything put together here and nicely linked together. So all of this that we're doing is of course still manual analysis. It's us, the humans going through and reading all this text and making sense of it. It's really important, certainly something we need to do to familiarize ourselves with the literature. But you know, all that being said, we do also have some tools here that can help perhaps kickstart our analysis. And so let's imagine we've added in the articles here and we haven't yet started reading them, but we want to get a quick global overview of what it is these authors are talking about. So what we can do is conduct a content analysis. And so in, in Atlas TI Mac, we go to the analysis menu here and in Windows, we have a tab with all these tools in it. Um, we see a lot of different options here. So if we wanna do a content analysis, we wanna see what words are coming up and how many times, or we can easily create word lists or word clouds. And so then we just tick the boxes here to tell Atlas TI which documents we want to look at. And then it shows us all the words that appear in these documents and we can see how many times they're appearing. And so we can view this as a list or a cloud. Now, unsurprisingly, V is the most frequently occurring word, but that's not really useful for my content analysis. And I'd rather just have these articles and prepositions just automatically excluded. Well, we do have plenty of more options for working with our content analysis here. And in particular, what would be helpful is to add a stop list. And so then we just select the language of our text. So in this case, that's English. And this is simply a list of English articles and prepositions. And we're telling Atlas TI to ignore those. And so now we get a much better understanding of what's coming up in these articles, what these authors are talking about, and so it's just a nice way to explore what we have going on out there. Uh, and if you'd like, you, we can even focus on specific parts of speech. And so if you do really want to get into this more fine-grained analysis of the language, then we can also do that here. And so this is something new with version 22. And so that's all, that can also be a really interesting way to explore the, all the text that we have. And then if you'd like, you, we can even export this, the list or the cloud, and that can be something interesting to include. And, in reports or presentations as well. So we have all those different ways that we can work with this and then very quickly and easily explore what we have in our literature. So for example, I can see here that uh, you know, friends actually is coming up quite a few times. And so, yeah, I mean, seeing happiness, children, parents, that makes sense to me. 
But I wonder what they're saying about friends, you know? So we don't know what context this is coming up. You know, I don't know if they're talking about the parents' friends or the children's friends or, yeah, in what context are they talking about this? Well, if, whenever we want to search for any particular word, we also have a great tool for that, our text search tool. So with this tool, we can look in any of our documents for any words that we're interested in. So again, we'll just tell Atlas TI which uh, documents we want to search in. And then we tell Atlas TI which words we're interested in. Uh, so every time Atlas TI finds this word, it can automatically select a quotation and attach a code for us. And so I can, we can tell it if we wanted to select the whole paragraph or just a sentence. What's also great here is that we can add any synonyms. And so this is really important to expand our search because maybe they're talking about friends, they just didn't use that exact word. And so then, of course, we can also add as many synonyms as we would like here. And we can add as many words as we want to in case you want to look at for combinations of words or one word or another, you know, so you can adjust this search to build up any kind of search that you'd like. And we can also include inflected forms. And so in this case, Atlas TI is taking the root of this word and it's also gonna capture any of the variations of it, like friend or friends or friendship. Uh, so then, you know, so that we get any time this concept is coming up. So then we can show the results and we'll be able to see all the sentences where we have these words appearing. So on the one hand, if we want, we can individually code each of these if we want to go one by one to see what we have. Of course, we can do this kind of more focused exploration, but we can certainly see the fuller context here. Uh, but on the other hand, maybe we want to just save all of these found quotations or even just a subset, you know, we can then just select them. And so then we can click on the coding icon up here and of course, create a code and it'll be automatically attached to all those quotations. So text search is a really great way to quickly and easily find any words that might be appearing across the articles. Now we have another really great tool that could be especially helpful for the literature review here. And this is something new with version 22. You know, let's imagine that uh, we, we are exploring our articles here and we wanna see what it is that authors are talking about but well, we wanna get a better idea of these different concepts that are being mentioned. And so indeed, we also have a concepts search tool here. And so if we open up the concepts table, again, we just tell Atlas TI which documents we wanna search in. And now Atlas TI is showing us any concepts that are mentioned. So before we were counting just every single word that appears, but here Atlas TI is looking for nouns and noun phrases. And so we can see this. And then if we click on any of these, we can see the exact quotations, you know, where these concepts are appearing and what kind of context and expand that so we can see it more. Uh, but besides just, you know, seeing and exploring, we can also automatically code these finds. And so we can go down here and we can even see that we can either code at the broadest level of the concepts of just happiness, but we can also see the different sub-concepts that are being mentioned. So happiness research or happiness and life satisfaction or your happiness, our happiness. So we can also go through to see these different sub-concepts and decide you know, what it is we're interested in. And then of course we have up here the option to code all these with that concept. So this is a really interesting kind of tool that can definitely help with the literature review and to very quickly needs to define where we have or first to explore to see what concepts are coming up. And then we can easily save that to see where they're coming up. So these are some great tools that can be really helpful, even in the beginning parts of the literature review as we're exploring and discovering what we have. Now we have some other uh, search and code tools here that I just wanted to mention, um, but in case you are interested, you know, you, you can always use these here. Uh, one tool that's also very interesting is named entity recognition. And so this is a special kind of automatic coding that Atlas TI will go by itself and identify any time a person, location, organization, or anything else has been mentioned. So under miscellaneous, you can have things like languages or political parties or works of art. And then you can also have these automatically coded. So 
if this is something you're interested in analyzing, this can be a great tool. Uh, or maybe it's not so relevant for your literature review, so you don't have to use it now, but I certainly want you to be aware you have that option in case you are, in case you ever need it in the future. And similarly, we also have a sentiment analysis tool. So again, I don't know how relevant it is for a literature review, but you know, if you do ever want to analyze what kinds of feelings are being expressed in the text, then this can be a great tool because that way I can automatically code for where there's a positive, negative, or neutral sentiment being expressed. So those are some of the different tools that we have here that can help with the literature review. And then of course we can go through coding and writing memos. Now, why don't we go ahead and move on over to Atlas TI for Windows for the remainder of the presentation to see what other kinds of tools we have that can help us out here. And so here we are, uh, and it's the same topic of project here in the same documents, but this in this project has been more analyzed. So we can also see what a project might look like once you've worked on it a bit more. So the interface is different to Mac, but everything that we did so far is exactly the same here, right? That we highlight text and we can right click to add our codes. Uh, we can also drag and drop from the left-hand side. And so you can do that to add codes, but as well to add your memos. So all those options are still here. And then under the search and code tab, you have all these different tools, right? So everything that we saw is still here. Uh, oh, and one thing I almost forgot to mention. Uh, so we, if we're adding articles to the project, we can always add documents here. Uh, but if you use a bibliographic reference manager like Mendeley or Sotero and so on, you can also import the references from there. And so in that case, you would go to the import tab here and then you'll select that option. And then Mac, you have that in the document menu. So that's in case you want to move your articles from your reference manager into Atlas TI, you also have that option. But now, so we know we can go through reading and coding and writing notes. And then once we've gone through and coded the articles, we have some other analysis tools here that can help us explore and query the literature in different ways. So let's imagine we wanted to examine potential patterns that might be coming up across our codes, across the different concepts that we were identifying in the literature review. So if we're interested in analyzing that, we could take a look at the code co-occurrence tools. So what we mean by co-occurrence is that we can see whether any codes appear together in the literature. So co-occurrence can mean that we have either two codes on the same quotation or that we have codes in overlapping quotations. But the point is, is that they're appearing together in the information. And so with this tool, we're gonna to construct a table and we're going to cross our codes in rows and columns, and then Atlas table show us whether any of these codes appear together and how many times. So for example, we take a look at all the codes that we have here. On the one hand, we went through coding the literature for what, uh, what research is saying and what also people uh, in online forums and uh, blogs and comments on blogs. So what they're saying about this whole kind of debate, are children increasing, decreasing happiness is the same, unrelated. So maybe we want to see uh, what kinds of things people say, right? These kinds of conclusions, if you will. And then I wanna see, you know, is there some pattern between these different explanations for this relationship? And then what kinds of effects are mentioned, whether more positive or negative effects are mentioned. And so we have, codes here to capture that. And so I'm just gonna select these here. So now you might notice that if we look at the code list here on the left-hand side, we have this sort of category, the broad top level code of this children and happiness. And then we have all these sub codes, more specific codes. So this is also something new with version 22 that we can put in this hierarchy in our codes. And so I wanna see each individual one. So that's why I selected the sub codes. While down here, I selected the category code because I'm not interested in what positive effect, I just wanna see any positive effect. And so the category code captures everything below it. So it's like aggregating everything. And so that's just to explain what I'm selecting here so we can understand that. So let me close this so we can see that. Or no, my apologies, there we have the positive and negative. So you can see that there. But all right, so we've selected our codes, we have them, a table is now built. And so let's take a look here. You know, maybe I'm even gonna invert this so we can see that a bit more clearly. 
So what this tool is showing us is that this code appears seven times together with any negative effects and three times together with any positive effects. So in other words, we can see that in seven different instances across our literature here, uh, it was said that children decrease happiness, you know, in seven instances when some negative effects are being described. So that's not very surprising, right? If they're talking about negative things, they're gonna say that. Uh, but also in three instances when positive effects are being described. And so we can already get some ideas of potential patterns that might be coming up. You know, I find that a little bit surprising that they're talking about positive things that having children brings, yet they're saying they decrease happiness. Well, also, you know, Atlas TI is very dynamic and interactive. And if we click on any of these cells, we can see the quotations behind these numbers. So we can see exactly what it is that authors or people were saying here. So then we can explore this in more detail. And this could be a great moment to open up a memo, for example, and write out our interpretations there and what we're seeing. And, you know, then we can look through the literature to see if our interpretations make sense. And, you know, we can start to develop more nuanced insights here. Now, we can also save this table to Excel if you want to export it and have it saved there. Uh, but down below, we can also see that Atlas TI is showing us a bar chart. And so it's showing us the exact same information, but in this nice visual format. And so then it's really easy to see which codes are appearing together and how frequently they're appearing together, you know, how clearly these patterns are coming out. And besides a bar chart, so the bar chart is something new with version 22. We have bar charts in a lot of different places now in Atlas TI. Uh, but in addition to the bar chart, we also have a Sankey diagram. So again, it's the exact same information, but in this really nice visual format that makes it so easy to see which codes are appearing together. And then the thickness of the lines correspond to the frequency, right? So the, the wider the line, the, the greater the coherence. So then it's just so easy to see, you know? So then when people said that children increase happiness, curiously enough, the same amount of positive and negative effects were mentioned, right? And so we can again explore these patterns and as we click on any part of the diagram, we see the information underlying this. And so this as well, if we'd like, we can save the Sankey diagram. It can also be something interesting to include in reports or presentations, but it's a great way to explore the literature. So with, when we're analyzing co-occurrence, we're analyzing which codes appear together in all the documents that we have here. And this can help, uh, help us identify potentially emerging patterns among the codes. You know, if we see something's appearing together many times, we might wanna ask ourselves why that is. You know, maybe there's some explanation there. Now, another really great tool for exploring all of our coded literature is the code document table. And this one in particular, I think can be especially helpful for the literature review. So with this table, uh, what we can look at is our code frequencies across all our articles. And so on the left-hand side, we can tell Atlas TI again, what codes are we interested in examining here? So for example, maybe I want to see all the different reasons for having children and reasons for not having children that were mentioned. So I can select those codes. And then we tell Atlas TI which documents we wanna search in. So we can look at individual documents, but also we can create subsets of our articles. And so we can create groups. We can make groups of documents, codes, memos. So it's a way that we can organize things in the project by making groups. You can make as many groups as we want. They are not mutually exclusive. So you can really use them to organize your articles in whatever ways you prefer. And groups are really great for this organization and for filtering because we can use a group to just focus on articles inside that group. And groups make it really easy to compare and contrast between them. So in this case, uh, we do have some actual uh, academic uh, research that we're looking at. But then we also did look at just research available online, like blogs and then comments that people wrote. And so we have these groups here, right? We have comments by readers and then we have actual research reports. And so if I wanna compare between these, then I'll select these two groups. So let's take a look at what we have here for a moment. Let's just focus on the table for just one moment. So Atlas TI is showing us that this code appears 13 times in the documents in this group and zero times in the documents in this group. So this gives us a really nice bird's eye view of where in our literature review we have the different codes coming up. 
And here we can see how it's so nice and easy to compare and contrast between these groups, right? Because then we can very, we already can see, for example, that altruism, or I just always knew that I would have kids. This only came up in comments of people, but in actual research reports, you know, different kinds of reasons were mentioned. And for example, the focusing illusion. So this is certainly, a, I suppose, a specific kind of concept that's only studied in research, you know? So we can already see this here and we can make some interesting comparisons. And so again, it's a nice moment to write in a memo, what we're seeing here, what kinds of insights we could draw. So right now, LSTI shows us the absolute frequencies. And of course, just like before, if you click on any cell in the table, you'll see the quotations behind these numbers. So we can easily explore exactly what's going on. But if we are, let's imagine we even want to do more fine-grained comparisons of this literature. And, you know, maybe I want to directly compare and contrast between these groups. So if we're interested in doing that, it can be problematic if we just look at absolute frequencies, because here we just have so much more information than we have here. So naturally, the frequency is much higher here. But Atlas TI is here to help us. And at the top, we have all these other options. And one thing we can do is normalize these counts. And so in this case, Atlas TI does take into consideration the density of the coding in each group, and then it equalizes them so or normalizes them so that we can indeed actually directly compare these numbers. And what's even more helpful, I would say, is that we can look at relative frequencies. And so then we can see here that uh, stating biology as a reason for having children well, the majority of the you know, support for this reason comes from the research reports, you know, 65%. And so then we can make these kinds of comparisons. So you can look at relative frequencies of rows, of columns. You know, so in the research reports, the most frequently mentioned one is actually culturally embedded beliefs. You know, so we already can get some ideas like this. So it's a great way to explore which codes are appearing across our project. And of course we can save this to Excel. And then just like before, we can see the same information as a bar chart and as a Sankey diagram. And so then it's very quick and easy to see where our codes are appearing across our literature. And so we have all these different ways to explore what we're finding, what we're noticing and writing notes and developing insights. But then there's a final, very helpful way to make sense of all this rich information and that's to work visually with all these different parts of our project. And so finally, I'd like to show how we can create networks. Why don't we create a, a new network here? Let's imagine in this network, I want to explore these different ways that happiness was defined. You know, since this is such an important topic and it's actually discussed so much. Uh, and so why don't we create a network to explore this? So we can view any part of our project in a network. And so in this case, we do have different codes about defining happiness. And so we can bring these in. So we add objects to a network just by dragging and dropping them in. So now we can see the code here. So this is one of those higher level category codes, but maybe I wanna bring in all of the subcodes too. We could drag and drop them in, but also, in a network, we can right click on any object and we can add any of its neighbors. So anything else that's linked to this object here. And so then we can see, yes, here are all, our, all of our subcodes. And then maybe we also wanna think about different, you know, positive effects, negative effects. And then of course we can start to draw connections across these different parts of our, of our project. And so we can click on any code and then this little square in the corner appears and we click on that and drag and drop to whatever other code we want to associate it with. And then when we let go of the mouse, we can choose a name for this relationship. So I want to say that these effects, you know, do they, are they a cause of definitions? No. Associated with? Yes. But, you know, really what I'd like to say is that the way that you define happiness uh, affects, the, the, affects the effects you feel. Or rather, maybe we should say that the positive effects depend on how happiness is defined. So I want to say it depends on. Well, we don't have to use just what Atlas TI gives us here by default. We can create any relation name we want. So it depends on. 
And Atlas CI is a very flexible tool. We can customize all sorts of parts of it. And so that the same goes for the networks. And we can even change the colors of the relations here. We can change the, the kind of arrow, if it's a single headed arrow or a double headed arrow. And there we have it. So we can link these different parts of the network together. And now we have depends on here saved. And so we can use that again. So in this way, we can start to show how all these different concepts are related and start sketching this out. This can be really great for building our conceptual or theoretical frameworks of the research, or maybe just to summarize what's going on in the literature. But we can also use networks just for our own thinking and making sense of things and organizing them, thinking how am I gonna present this, these ideas and when I'm writing it, or even just for our own brainstorming, you know, because it's just a very helpful way to think through things. Now here, we can also view more detailed information. And so if you'll remember before, we wrote comments on our documents where we put the full reference. Well, codes also have a comment space. And that's the perfect place to write out the definition of each code. So exactly how do we understand this concept? You know, how are we analyzing this? So we can also show that in the network. Uh, we can also see frequencies. So in this case, Atlas TI is showing us two numbers with each code. Uh, the G for groundedness tells us how many quotations we have attached to this code. And D for density tells us how many links this code has within the other codes of the project. So here, for example, it has a density of two because we created these two links. And so remember, we can keep exploring uh, the different parts of the project here. And so maybe I can see I have six quotations about this long-term view but I can't quite remember what it was the participants said about this, or, or not participants, but the, the people in the blogs and the comments. So I wanna refresh my memory. So again, we can right click to add neighbors. And in this case, I'm gonna bring in those quotations. So Atlas TI adds those six quotations. And, and here, for example, I can see that we coded this quotation with this code and this one. So Atlas TI remembers all those links we made. And when we open things up in a network, we can see them. We can also preview the quotation so we can see the full content of each quotation. And we can link any parts of the network together. So we can even link quotations with quotations. Maybe here, one author described this in one way, and this is actually uh, contradicting the way another author described it. So we can also show all these different relations among all the, the information from the literature review. And we can view any part of our project in the network. So maybe we also have uh, here a memo about how you know, happiness is being defined. And so we can also bring that in, see our notes. We can also link memos to different parts of the network. You know, so you can draw all these connections out. And now that I've added all these extra things to the network, I you know, made it a little bit messy, uh, but we have all of these great layout options that we can also use. And so then we can explore organizing all the nodes of our network in different ways. And maybe we find one that we like, uh, and then you know, I can say, okay, maybe this is how I wanna keep it. And so then of course we can also uh, save the network as an image. And then this is something really great to include in our reports, in our presentations, because it's just such a great way to summarize what we found or to show readers what, what's our kind of framework guiding our analysis, how does this all come together. And always visual, visual displays are a great way to convey a lot of information. And so networks are certainly a powerful way to do that. And so with that, we've seen our global overview of how we can use Atlas TI to facilitate the literature review. We saw a lot of different tools and features here, but more than anything, I want to encourage you to just explore. You know, so you'll see once you add in your own articles, uh, you know, I think things always start to click together more. And, and then you have all the extra help here. So you can see all of our different resources and the documentation. So you, know, you can see more about these different tools we saw today and there's much more to explore as well. Uh, but here in particular, you know, if you have any questions or doubts, just click and you can chat with us in real time. And so, well, you can choose if you want to send an email, but you can also click on the chat. Let us know what questions or concerns or comments you have. And then a member of our team will get in touch with you and be happy to help out however we can. And so then with that, why don't we 
take a moment. If there's any questions, please feel free to write in the chat in the Q&A here. I can see we have a couple. So I'm going to go ahead and have a go at those. But if any other questions come up, you know, please feel free to, to write them out here. So for example, we have one question. Can we sort documents by name or organize them in some specific order? So yes, this is possible. Uh, by default, documents appear in the order that you add them to the project. But then if you want to change how they're sorted, what you can do is open up the manager for documents. So you'll see here that every entity has its own manager. And managers are just where you can see more detailed information on each one and edit, make groups, and do this kind of more global work with it. So on the one hand, you can click on the column headers to organize the documents according to all these different dimensions. And then, uh, so in Windows, you can easily change the order like this. You can order them how you want, be that by name or by creation date or whatever you prefer. And then you would go to tools up here and then you can renumber the documents. And so then Atlas TI will change the numbers here. And so now they appear in this order. And so then they'll stay like that. So that's how you could uh, sort them. What I also think is more helpful perhaps is to um, like, I mean, we don't have to worry too much about it. This is my own experience. It hasn't been too much of a worry is the order of the documents, but rather what is really helpful is to make these groups. And so we can do that in the manager. You just drag and drop selected documents to make a group. And then that way, maybe we group by journals, methodologies, publication year, authors, topics, right? Like any kinds of groupings, organization that you'd like. And then what's great about this is that we can see the groups here. And so then it's easy to kind of just look at subsets of them. So that's something that I do find really helpful for the literature. Review. You know, some these are about happiness. These are about children. These are about parenthood. And then it's so easy to look through them. And remember, any single document can belong to multiple groups. So that's why it's a very nice way to organize them. And so another question. So you notice that using the the colon created a kind of a yeah, it did something with the code. So you're saying it created a kind of code group, but not really. So exactly, uh, that's a great question. In fact, I'm gonna go back to the Mac version because that's where this happened. Because in the Windows one, we already have the codes organized. So this is true. This is something new with version 22. Like I said, that you can put this hierarchy in your codes. And so the way that this works is that, you know, we have all these different codes. And of course we can start just by writing codes and, you know, don't worry about structure yet. First, just read. <laughs> uh, but then as you start making codes, and then you have some things like different kinds of definitions. You know, maybe that's something you can do already from the beginning. So when we were coding, or let me open a one where we don't have anything yet. And we are adding a code. So if you write any word or maybe like research gap, and then you put a colon and then something else, Atlas TI is interpreting that we're telling it. So we have this kind of category here. And then everything after the colon is a subcode to that category. So maybe here's an empirical gap that's being mentioned, while here we have a theoretical gap. So you can also do that. And then Atlas is automatically making this structure. And so it's just, again, a nice way to organize things. And so that's how you can do that. And then even as we continue reading, and then I find a new definition. So we can just click on that code. Atlas TI brings it up when you click. And then again, we can write a colon and make our new one. And then Atlas TI will automatically add it in, right? So you can easily add them like this. So that's one way to make this hierarchy of codes. Also, you can manually put this together in the code manager. So I just opened up the document manager uh, where we made groups of documents and then to reorder the, the documents. But same goes for codes, right? All the managers work in the same way. And if you're coding, just making codes based on what you see, and then maybe we come here and now I want to organize it. Uh, any code can be a category top level code as long as it has zero quotations on it. So if you want to make the hierarchy yourself, all you have to do is create a new code. So for example, I can see we identify different kinds of satisfaction. Maybe that's a category. 
an important concept, a category that's coming up in literature review. So I want to capture that. So I'm just going to create a new code. So it has zero quotations. And then we can select all of these codes we want to put together and drag them onto here and tell Atlas tab we want to add these codes. So just that first option right there. And then same thing, it's added them. The reason it has to have zero quotations is because that category code is aggregating that. So that's what that number is telling us. So that's very briefly about uh, the code hierarchy, but we have video tutorials and many more explanations in the manual. So feel free to check that out because this is something very, really helpful. And we, we do give a lot of advice there. So I definitely recommend it. And Mac, you have the help menu where you can see all of the uh, documentation. And then the chat is right up here. And so then, yeah, you can initiate that live chat with us. You can also search for articles. So you can get in touch with us, but also you can search for things here, right? And so then as well, you can try that out to find uh, more information as well. Well, so yeah, so I hope I was able to answer everyone's questions. Um, and, you know, as you're working and getting involved in it, and if any other questions come up, you know, we have all these different ways that you can reach out to us. And so please feel free to, we'd be happy to help. Uh, but yeah, so then other than that, I mean, we can uh, wrap up the, the webinar for today. And so I hope you all enjoyed it. And like I said, I really just want to encourage you to give it a go, you know, get your hands dirty with it, try it out. And then as questions come up, you know, you can always reach out to us to find information. So, uh, so yeah, it, I hope you do find it helpful. I mean, honestly, I can't imagine not reading anything without putting it in Atlas TI. It's really like a whole library that we can compile and then get multiple studies out of it, right? Because then you can always come back to it at any points in the future. So I do hope it serves you well in your research and your literature reviews. And other than that, I just want to wish everyone all the best in your literature reviews and analysis journeys. So thanks everyone and have a great rest of the day. Goodbye.